Hello and welcome to today's presentation. My name is Thomas, I'm a registered nurse. I'm presenting on anatomy of urinary system. I'm sure you guys have heard of the urinary system. Let's look at the basic anatomy concepts for nurses. Welcome. Introduction to the urinary system. The urinary system's function is to filter blood and create urine as a waste product. The organs of the urinary system include the kidneys, the renal pelvis, ureters, bladder, and urethra. The body takes nutrients from food and converts them to energy. After the body has taken the food components that, that it needs, waste products are left behind in the bowel and in blood. So this waste have to be removed. When looking at the diagram of the urinary system, we can appreciate the two kidneys, left and right kidney. We can appreciate the ureter, right? The urinary bladder, the sphincter, and lastly, the urethra. These are the major parts of the urinary tract. Have you guys interacted with cadavers? Yeah. Remember, you should be able to name the different parts. Like you can see the kidney. On top of the kidney, we have a gland, the suprarenal gland or adrenal gland. Remember, to want, if you want to know more about the urinary gland, you can click and find my presentation on endocrine system where we discuss the hormones produced by the adrenal gland. Look at the two ureters. Yeah, the two ureters. Then here we have the sigmoid colon. Uh, this one will revisit it when you are going to look, be looking at the GIT system, gastrointestinal system. And then lastly, the urinary bladder, okay? The receiver and where urine is stored before it's excreted. The urinary tract system, the urinary system is divided into two portions. We have the upper urinary tract and the lower urinary tract. Looking at here, we can appreciate the part of the kid, the ureters, and the two kidneys. You can see, still see the adrenal gland. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, form part of the upper urinary tract. This is compared to the lower urinary tract that consists of parts of the ureters, the urinary bladder, and the urethra. Thank you so much. So the urinary system helps the body eliminate wastes, and these wastes, we, are, we term them urea. Also, it helps to keep chemicals such as potassium, sodium, and water in balance. Remember, we'll be looking at the normal ranges for these different electrolyte uh, levels. Of course, we know potassium is 3.5 to 5, as compared to sodium, which is 135 to 145. So urea is produced when foods containing proteins, such as meat, poultry, certain vegetables, are broken down in the body. So urea is carried in the bloodstream to the kidneys, where it is removed along with water and other waste in the form of urine. Guys, urinary system, urine. At this juncture, we should be able to be knowing that that is the major role of the urinary system, urine, formation of urine and removal or excreting it. So the first component of this urinary system, we have the kidneys, and you say there are two, it's a pair. They are bean-shaped, 
Their purple brown organs, they are located below the ribs in the middle at the back. We normally say that the kidneys are retroperitoneal. And retroperitoneal means they are not wrapped with the peritoneal layers the way most abdominal organs are, but rather are placed behind it, behind the peritoneal cavity. We should be able to appreciate the ureter, the renal vein, renal artery, the calyx, renal pelvis, the medulla, and the cortex. Of course, we have the outer one, the cortex, and the inner one, medulla. When you try to look at the, some of the facts and the parting shots about the kidney, we say that it is positioned retroperitoneally, and that's what we had said, and consists of the cortex and the medulla, empties urine into the ureter, which carries urine to the urinary bladder. So the kidney also has an artery, and we're saying that here we have the renal artery, which is the branch of abdominal aorta. For the vein, we have the renal vein, which normally drains into the inferior vena cava, back to the right auricle, where it is taken back to the lungs for oxygenation. We have, for innovation, we have the renal plexus. Clinical significance includes, uh, we could be having third kidney, horseshoe kidney, kidney agenesis, kidney stones, and even acute renal failure. We have a quiz, guys. I'm giving you a minute. The question reads that the kidneys are located retroperitoneally. This means they are dash the peritoneum. Posterior, anterior, inferior, superior, it's lateral. A minute. Very good, guys. We said behind the peritoneum, posterior the peritoneum. Very good. That was excellent. When you compare <coughs> the right kidney and the left kidney, we can see that the left kidney uh -oh, is slightly above when you compare with the right kidney. So the left kidney is slightly higher compared to the right kidney. And which organ is found at the right side of the kidney, above or superior to the kid left right kidney? The liver, wonderful, the liver. So the liver is found here, so it slightly pushes the right kidney to be at a least lower. Whereas on this other side, we have the stomach and the heart superior to it, so there's a now space where the left kidney attempts to occupy. Great, guys. So you can see they are not per se at the same level. The left kidney is slightly elevated. So external <coughs> anatomy of the kidney, the kidneys are located between the transverse process. Sorry. <clears throat> of T3 and L3 vertebrae. The left kidney, as we have said, typically positioned slightly more superiorly than the right. And this is because the liver and the stomach offset the symmetry of the abdomen, with the liver forcing the right kidney a bit down and the stomach forcing the left kidney a bit up. The superior pores of both kidneys are more medially pointed towards the spine than the inferior pores. The helium of the kidney usually projects at the level of L2 vertebrae. Thus, the ureter is seen uh, para 
vertebrally, starting from the L2 and going downwards. Very good. So the next portion of this section, we are describing the blood flow in the kidney. We are saying that blood enters the kidney through the renal artery, which is a branch of the abdominal aorta. This major artery gives off several branches that repeatedly divide until the final branch, that is a pharyngeal arterial, which leads into the nephron. This arterial leads to a capillary bed called the glomerulus. Glomerulus, guys. Remember, this is the site of fil filtration. So blood moves the capillary bed through the efferent arterial, which leads to another capillary bed known as the peritibular capillaries. After the capillary bed, the veins merge into large vessels that lead into one renal vein, leaving the kidney, which drains into the inferior vena cava. Wonderful. So we have the renal artery, interlobar artery, acute artery, corticoradial artery, efferent arterioles, then they go to the glomerular capillaries, efferent capillaries, back to the second uh, capillary, uh, back to the second capillary bed, yeah? The one for the peritibular capillaries, yeah? Then the, cortic the cortical radial radiate vein, articulate vein, interlobar vein, then finally, we converge into the renal. Uh oh, they converge to the renal vein, which drains into the inferior vena cava. Great, guys. So, what are the functions of the kidneys? A minute, so that you can send me. I'm looking at the chart. Yes. Yes. Elimination, yeah? Okay. So guys, when you look at my diagram here, the yellow tube is the ureter, and this is where the excess water and toxic, water, uh, toxic wastes leave the kidney via the ureter in the form of urine. Okay? Sorry. The form of urine down to the urinary bladder. Here we have the renal vein, the one that we have just talked about here. Um, the, it needs to drain, needs to drain the kidney into the inferior vena cava. So filtered blood or excess water leave the kidney through the renal vein. This is back to the system or the body system. The renal artery, this is where blood, waste, and water enters the kidney through the renal artery for the process of uh, filtrations and purifying it before it can be taken back to the body. Ideally, those are some of the functions of the, the kidneys. You should have at least seven functions of the kidney. a quiz here. The kidneys are mainly responsible for helping the body in excreting water through urine, purification and filtration of body of, of blood before sending it to the heart, removal of waste and toxins from the body, stimulate RBC, that is production in the bone marrow, Regulation of blood pressure, maintenance of fluid balance, electrolytes and minerals, production of calcitrol that maintains calcium in the body. We only need to select one answer here. The question is mainly. 
Thank you. Uh, yes, yes, I agree that all these are the functions of the kidneys. Partition is the major one. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to have picked a excreting water through urine. We said urinary system, formation of urine. Yeah? Great. So the kidneys, we have functional units of the kidney and they are referred to as the nephron. So he's saying that the renal corpus consists of a capillary bed called the glomerulus and a capsule of epithelial cells. The hydrostatic pressure of blood forces water and solutes out of the blood and into the capsule. Glomerular filtrate collects into the capsular space before entering the first portion of the renal tubule, known as the proximal tubule. After flowing through the proximal tubule, fluid enters the nephron loop, which extends toward the renal papilla. Fluid in the distal tubules will flow into a collecting duct. So that's how the nephron is. So if you're trying to list the urine producing structure in the correct order, we'll be having the glomerular capsule leading to proximal convoluted tubule. Then you have the nephron, distal convoluted tubule, and lastly, collecting duct. Yes. In terms of diagrams, you can see I've tried to explain here of the glomerular capsule. Yeah, we go to the glomerulus. Okay, then proximal tubule. Yeah, the nephron loop, the peritoperi. Tubular capillaries, then the distal tubule, then the collecting duct. Great. Great, guys. Thank you very much. So the glomerulus, its role is to, it's involved in the filtrations of fluids and solutes from the plasma. Glomerular capsule receives the plasma filtrate. What about the proximal converted tubule? It helps in reabsorption of nutrients, glucose, various ions, and water. Descending loop of, descending limb of nephron of loop, nephron loop, yeah, or loop of Henle, yeah. It is involved in reabsorption of only water. What about the ascending, ascending loop of uh, Henley? They're saying this one you have re selective reabsorption of sodium, potassium, and chloride ions. Then the distal converted tubule, we have reabsorption of sodium, water, and secretion of hydrogen and potassium ions. Thank you. Thank you so much. So can you answer, can you attempt to answer this question? What tube-like structure carries urine from the kidney to the bladder? Yeah, this one has no multiple choices. You just need one answer. Ureters, very good, very good. So the ureters are bilateral, muscular, tubular structures responsible for taking urine from one kidney to the urinary bladder for storage prior to excretion. After bladder has been filtered in the kidneys, the filtrate goes a series of reabsorptions and exudation through the length of the convoluted tubules. The resulting liquid then passes to the collecting tubules after which it enters the collecting ducts. From the collecting ducts, the urine passes the, the, the calyxes to the renal pelvis, which marks the beginning of the ureters. 
So the arterial supply to the uterus comes directly and indirectly from abdominal aorta. It's good to note that there is no ganglia on the ureters. However, it receives both sympathetic and parasympathetic innervation. Facts about the ureters. We are saying that uh, histologically, it consists of transitional epithelium with longitudinal and circular muscle layers. Relation, starting with the right ureters, we have the psoas major, the genital femoral nerve, duodenum, branches of superior mesenteric vessels, and the bladder. Compared to the left ureters, the relations, in terms of the relation, we, this one borders the, the psoas major, genital femoral nerve, branches of inferior mesenteric vessels, and the bladder. In terms of blood supply, ureteric uter, uh, branch of the renal artery, it could be ovary <coughs> for the females, or testicular artery, ureteric uh, branch of the abdominal aorta, branches of the superior and inferior the vesicular arteries. In terms of innervation of the ureters, we have renal plexus and ganglia. Ure ureteric branches of intermesenteric plexus, pelvic splanchic nerves, inferior hypogastric plexus. What about the lymphatic drainage? We have the common precaval and lumbar lymph nodes that are involved in lymph drainage. Great. It's important to know that the ureters are collapsible. They are S-shaped channels. They vary in length of about 25 centimeters in length. They are widest at the renal pelvis where they are leaving the, <coughs> the kidneys and narrow progressively as they enter the urinary bladder in that concavity of the true pelvis. The lumen of each ureter is lined with a mucosal layer of transitional epithelium. This accommodates the increase in pressure that accompanies increase in the volume of urine leaving the kidneys. So this is very important because it aids to minimize the risk of rupturing the ureters. These contents have several infolding caused by multiple layers of smooth muscles throughout the ure ureteral wall. Histologically, there are two muscle layers in the wall of the ureter. We have the longitudinal and the circular muscle. In the lower segment of the ureters, another longitudinal layer can be found proximal to the bladder. Urine is propelled along the ureters by the peristaltic motions, initiated by the pacemaker cells in the proximal renal pelvis. There's a whitish and non pulsatable exterior along with the peristaltic waves, which helps to distinguish between the ureters and blood vessels. I hope no one is will confuse the ureters and blood vessels, especially on the yes. Great. What is the clinical significance of the ureters? We are saying that obstruction of the ureters leads to pooling of water in the renal pelvis, resulting in conditions such as hydronephrosis. Also, the ureters normally become distended and the patient present with pain along the tip of the ninth costal cartilage to the end of the common iliac artery. So dilation can occur over a short period of time and if left untreated may result in dysfunction and possibly contribute to acute renal failure. Consequent to the obstruction, renal atrophy may also happen. So renal obstruction may also be caused by the formation of kidney stones, or they may be blocked as a result of extensive convolution arising from ectopic 
wickedness. Cysts arising at the ureter pelvic junction can also result in renal obstruction. So in terms of clinical significance, we talk of renal obstruction, acute renal failure, and hydronephrosis as major clinical significances. So from the ureter, where do we go, guys? The urinary bladder. This one is a whole organ that functions to store urine. We have the parietal peritoneum, forms the serous coat on the outer surface of the bladder. Yes. We have the dextrusor muscle and is part of the muscular coat layer of the bladder. This tissue contracts to help expel urine from the bladder. The submucosus coat of the renal bladder is a layer of connective tissue that contains blood vessels and nerves. We talk of the transitional epithelium of the renal bladder, which lines the lumen and prevents urine from diffusing from the lumen. The epithelium is part of the mucus coat. Take, for example, the male urethra. Yes, because you are from the renal bladder, the urethra so has regions, yeah, like the prostatic urethra. Yes. Is a short segment that passes through a reproductive organ. It receives secretions from two ejaculatory ducts. From there we have the membranous urethra, passes through the pelvic floor. Then you have the penine urethra. This is the longest part of the male urethra. So the urethra has three regions when you're referring to male urethra. Prostatic urethra, membranous urethra, and the penile urethra. Urine normally exists, exits from the urethra by an external urethral orifice. On my far right are the diagram. You can see ureter, renal bladder, urethra, prostate, prostate gland, the serous cord that we are talking about. Yeah. Great, guys. I have a question for you. The external urethra, urethral sphincter, is made up of dash muscle. This is the cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, skeletal muscle, longitudinal muscle. Skeletal muscle, yes. Skeletal muscle. So the diagram is just but here to make things even more clear. The ureter, uh, the trigon, and the bladder, the prostate gland. Then you have now the prostatic urethra. Yeah. Then in the immediate part of the urethra, we have the penile urethra. You say it is the longest. Then you have the external urethral orifice. Yeah controlled by the skeletal, skeletal muscles. Okay, guys, we've come to the end of this unit. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like the video and subscribe so as to be notified of videos once, once they have been published. Thank you so much.